Hi, my name is Fran Kasten, and I'm happy to be here today reading to you from my book, The Widow's Quilt, and a few other things. This first poem is called Breathing. In a sunlit corner, I sit with my dog and listen to our breathing. I like to think my breath goes all the way to her heart, to her tail, to the park where she runs it around a tree. Every breath is borrowed, all the breaths ever taken, ever to be taken, are somewhere in this world. When life seems an inherent unsuccess, failing as it does in the end, at least as we know it, I sit in a sunlit corner, push out my belly in this great exchange, breathe deep with those who've gone and those to come. Once uh, I read that and a physicist told me that we exchange breaths with Gandhi about 17 times, so I felt really happy about that. This next poem is called Operation Crazy Horse, and it's the name of an operation uh, that took place during the Vietnam War and my first husband was a journalist at that time and he unfortunately covered this operation. I had hoped that I could put this poem in mothballs but it seems as if we're once again engaged in a, a terrible conflict in Iraq. Operation Crazy Horse. A grand Kowloon Hotel, a hedge of red hibiscus, a tiled pool, a masseuse who pressed fragrant oil of almond into my body in the full heat of the sun. Elsewhere, northeast of Saigon, a man beheld you and fired. At the undertakers you were all made up and your hair was parted wrong, so I smoothed it the way I thought you would have liked. Someone shouted, stop, as if we were caught making love on the couch in my father's house. God knows what they feared. Unfamiliar streaks in your hair must have paled at the moment of terror and grown longer in the time since, eerie as strands of ticker tape still printing. Such dark hair, shocked white. How afraid you were. All I could do was hold you. This next poem is called Soldier's Widow, a generic photo. And actually it was written during the first Bush's Middle East War uh, when I was horrified to see the coffins coming home again and the widows and the folded flags. And when I wrote this poem, a phrase came to me which provided the title of my book, Soldier's Widow, a generic photo. The widow always wears a black coat. She is cold in this coat, even in summer. She is here to receive the flag. She is here to say hers is a small sacrifice for God and for country. Valium is the drug of choice for such occasions. She will not cry out. She will not collapse. Two men, solid as a pair of bookends, flank her and grip her arms. They wear dark suits or other uniforms. Hero is the theme of the elegy. As if her husband chose to give his life. Tonight she will sleep with the widow's quilt, the folded flag taken from his coffin. And now um, I would like to read a small poem, a little sonnet, for my friend Steve Cedaring, who unfortunately passed away a few months ago from pancreatic cancer. And, uh, I was privileged to help her finish her last book, uh, which was just published by Pushcart Press, and it's called Vixen. And this is called 
manuscript for Sieve. Though you are far away, death far, I see you close, my eye a zoom lens focused on your hands, palms upturned to give or receive, fingers like a corps de ballet, devoted hands, more synecdochic than your trademark dimples, twin parts of you, most like the whole, hands shaping your poems, musical scores, sculptures, hands offering the manuscript you know will be your last, while my eye, faithful copyist, records and saves each gesture. The last poem that I'll read you uh, is for one of my five grandchildren, the joy of my life, and uh, this one is for a young man who's nine now. His name is Ford, and uh, it's called Sailing. If it weren't for the trees, there are times we would not notice the life of air. We'd forget we are whirling. Two pines at the inlet seem at first one tree until the air lifts their branches, carries their long, slim trunks away from each other and, and back. Then they seem to gossip. There I go again, always demanding meaning, the sort of narrative that delights English, noun and verb and direct object to suggest purpose, not chaos. I love plans. In the afternoon, our grandson sees the half moon in a sky blue sky alive with foamy clouds, having spent only 19 months on earth with unblemished freshness and no linguistic bias, he points to that brilliant mass afloat in the blue and says, Boat! I want to lift the sails, the battened years of seeing. I want to shout Boat! at the moon. I want to remember our moon boat, to recognize every moment, even at a desk, paying bills, even when the wind is still and earth seems unplanetary, we are sailors of the Milky Way, waving our spangled arms to all who travel the universe. Thank you so much.